Welcome back to Composer's Play. It's been a long time, but uh, I'm finally back here, and uh, today we're playing the Gunk, um, and uh, I'm joined gratefully by uh, an amazing composer, uh, Oscar Oidelius. Thank you so much, Ooh. Oscar, for joining me. Thanks, dude. Thanks. I'm glad to be on board. This is this is going to be amazing because I yeah, as I said, I was talking to you. I played this first in in December, and uh, and I was blown blown away by the music. It's just like yeah, it's just so good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. We'll see. <laughs> we will. We will see. Uh, so tell me, how, how did you first get into doing uh, video game music? I mean, yeah, video game music. So a bit of. Uh, uh, I was studying at the time, and I was actually uh, so. There's this town up in Sweden called Skövde where uh, there was a school, you know, uh, for game makers or whatever. Actually, the school where Notch was were, uh, studying, you know, that did Minecraft. Um, mm -hmm. And at that time, I was just up visiting, and I bumped into a lot of peeps and uh, companies and everything. And from there, you know, just basically started doing that thing. So, and that was like I don't know, maybe is it almost 15 years now? Oh right? wow! So, yeah, that's cool, man. And uh... so I said, I said I will be spoiling something for you. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're actually coming up to it. So okay, cool. Well, I will um, maybe I'm interrupting your questions, but no, like so it's very vague, but so there will be something here. And that is uh, the lead motif of the planet, actually. Yeah, it's lovely. And before, just when we did the intro of the, the, the game, um, we also heard the lead theme of the two main characters and that yeah should be it's playing. it's a lovely little one yeah that should be playing here no that's not it <laughs> this is this is the lead motif of uh, the protagonist of the game oh yeah yeah and then I think I can't remember now that we hear the lead theme of them to afterwards is. So I'm actually spoiling the whole plot of the game <laughs> with uh, the themes. Nice. That's good. <laughs> but no, no one will ever notice. So no like, one ever know. noticed. Yeah. <laughs> only, only. And like, you know, I didn't even notice it. So I, I and I'm like, I usually get all the little small little things when I'm when I'm listening uh, to uh, to the music and games. But it's like it's. I mean, at this point, you wouldn't even know the melodies or the themes of any characters. So it's kind of like you right. would only be able to actually realize it if you play the whole game, understand what the themes are, you know, for what, and then <laughs> replay the game. So it's kind of stupid. But you know, you get obsessed with stuff, and you just need to put it in there. So <laughs> that was one of those things. Yeah, you know, I think it's cool, man. I I love I love little Easter eggs and in, uh, in music, and it's just yeah, it's. They're so small, but they're like it. Just you know, as a composer, it makes it makes you happy. It's like <laughs> someone yeah, yeah. might get this, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking like I think I was also. I got so inspired by you know John Powell when he did the um, How to Train Your Dragon. Oh yeah, yeah. No, the the intro he does almost exact that thing. I think where it's like he spoils all themes except for the one of uh, the, the 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 dragon. What's the is it called? Hic no, Hiccup is the main character. Uh, oh yeah, I haven't seen it in yeah. such a long time. <laughs> no, but the, the yeah, so he spoils all themes of the whole movie except for the Night Fury. Was it called something like that? I yeah, think. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, <clears throat> and the kind of does it in Born as well with the um, the Born motif. You know that the he kind of he yeah. kind of hints at at the start. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. So where did you come up with that light motif for the the characters? The where, yeah. where, where was that? Where did you come up with that? Like, and what was your what was your top process behind it? So yeah, I mean, I was like sure that the motif of the two main characters would be the motif of the game actually for I mean oh. quite long. Uh, but that motif uh, of the yeah the, the I mean because it's the opposite you know the, so if for the people that have played the game that green gooey stuff that we just saw is like some kind of life force uh, that uh, you know the planet has and uh, basically I'd wanted something to represent that thing and uh, yeah I mean so um, at one point I remember I wanted to maybe kind of try to grasp the whole game some like and the whole 
uh, conflict and the whole progress of the two main characters, basically the whole game. So I did like a big concept art kind of music thing of like 10 minutes something. And uh, it kind of uh, became three big parts where it's like there was the beginning of Ronnie and Beck's adventure, the mid part and then the end. And um, when doing the mid part, that melody just came to me and uh, uh, because I wanted to describe, yeah, basically the life source thing. And then the, I was like, I thought that was so good and I liked it so much. So uh, and, and the, the rest of the team liked it as well. So then that kind of became the theme for the whole game rather than the story like the, the Yeah, the theme of the two players or characters. Yeah, so gotcha. Yeah, because it, it, it sounds so nice on uh, on cello. Yeah, it really sings. It's like, like I couldn't hear an, an any other instrument because I was playing it in with my keyboard and it doesn't sound great on piano. I mean, it still sounds nice, but the way that the piano or the way the cello pl plays it, it's just like, it's just wonderful, large leaps and intervals. It's just, it's so nice. Yeah. And also hard to play like Bjorn, mm. uh, again, the cello player, like the way he interpreted it was, uh, yeah, it was amazing. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. It definitely like, I don't, I don't play any string instrument, string instruments, but, uh, you can tell it's like that that large leap it's like to get it right you know it's, it'd be it'd be tricky enough yep <clears throat> also doing a bit of that like uh gliss up or whatever it's called like you know where you yeah portamento stylish <clears throat> right right no, but he's a beast he's a beast yeah and of course i knew that i wanted to work with him so i could have him in my in my like head when doing the the thing to know that that would work so right yeah, Actually, I, I sketch a lot on Melodica. I think that's a nice way to sketch for oh. string instruments. Um, Interesting. A tree. A tree. It's. I, I love that the first time I, I cleaned up the gunk, I was like, wow, okay. And the whole world starts changing around you. It's, it's really amazing. Like, Yeah. <laughs> Kurt, what a, what a legend. Kurt, His little tie. Fun. <laughs> yeah, awesome job by the, the the audio team as well there with uh, uh, Victor that made all of the sound design. Oh the yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, yeah. I do like the hoovery suck, suck sound from the glove. Mm. Yeah, Melodica, I think that's like, because also, you know, it's easy to be very dynamic. And you can also kind of, you know, you can still play two tones at the same time, where it's like, so you can, you know, you do a little mm. bit of this, like, uh, transition-y things. Um, and yeah. it's easy to carry. You can run around in the woods with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, It's cool. I actually have one, but it's, like, it's slightly flat. <laughs> so, okay. for me to, like, get it to, like, like, like properly stay in intonation, I have to bend it. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but it's fine. You know, if I'm playing, you know... You know, it doesn't really matter. It just kind of gives it a little bit more flavor. <laughs> like physically bended to, or yeah, actually oh. physically bent. This is plastic, so I'm like, Urgh. I was like, there's there's oh. something wrong. I don't know what the internal is. There's definitely something going on with it, but yeah, it is. It's it's a great it's a great instrument though. I love it. I feel like I need to order a new mouthpiece though. Like me and my <laughs> friend Nicholas, we've been paying so much. It's like, oh, it's starting to get nasty, man. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with COVID, it's like... <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> yeah, you can get the foot pedals, can't you? You can get like a foot pedal that's... Uh, that you just plug into it and then you use your, use your foot, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't... you can't tell, but I have also... I did a, There's a lot of pump organ on this soundtrack as well, so... Oh, there, nice. I have some standing right behind, uh, behind me here. So it's a big studio complex where I work, so... Um, Anders, a good colleague of mine, and uh, some friends, they actually found it in an old church, uh, in the basement of an old church. It looks like a coffin, like, so you can kind of fold it together and carry it around. Oh, wow, um, that's cool. Yeah, but now I, I'm honored to, to be able to have it in my room and... Use it awesome. as much as I want. That's yes. cool. So, what do you sketch usually when with like you just go MIDI and yeah, use keyboard or yeah, I I usually yeah MIDI like what do I usually go first with? It's usually like a cello or something. Yeah, something like that or piano or like a string ensemble patch. Mm -hmm. Something like that, and then I kind of go from there. With those patches, have they like are they layered out so that you will be it spread out with the whole orchestra kind of or? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. I do, piece, yeah. yeah, I do have some like templates and that that you know that have pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. I actually I do have to upgrade though because I'm using like a really old version of a uh, cakewalk, and mm -hmm. um, it's. Yeah, it's it's super old and like I need to like I, I know I'm looking at maybe Cubase or something. Uh, yeah, because I'm just like I'm just using old. I mean, I like my old software and stuff. Yeah, just I'm a, I'm a big fan of like not changing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just did a switch with my computer. I waited for so long, you know, dragging it out, but yeah, it's not fun doing that stuff. With yeah. All plugins and um, yeah. 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 Scooping some metals. Metal. Yes, yes, yes. So five more to go. That's cool. I love the way the music just kind of comes back in. Is, is it adaptive the music when when certain events happen? Um. So this was actually one case where I felt it was weird that it it's mostly it's not actually like so you could so be, of course the the last boss is uh, very interactive of course with its mm -hmm. different levels and you can there's a layer of. Uh, like intensity coming on when you're close to the gunk, but it's yeah, right. you can hear it. But it's very subtle. Like uh, so, one goal I had in the beginning, because in the beginning they talked a lot about interactive uh, music, and I'm all down for that. I think it's awesome, but uh, I think sometimes it goes back and forth a little too much for my own taste. Uh, where it's like, uh, you know, so we would now be jumping into like a battle -y kind of thing uh, and then we would jump back to this other thing and um, uh, Yeah, I feel like uh, at least I had as a vision that it should not go too much back and forth that it would be more of a streamlined kind of thing so this layer will be on at all times when um, when there's uh, gunk close and then on bigger events, of course, the, the music will change and on levels and all that stuff. But um, other than that, I would say it's mostly loop. So, so like, so you had cello and viola, and your uh, pump Violin, organ, yeah. and your melodica. Any other real instruments that you recorded? I mean, all are. The piano's real as well. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. Uh, could be un like uh, dubbed a little bit by uh, at some points where like my old piano wasn't really that heavy on the like uh, lower regions like the mm -hmm. the bass stuff so sometimes I needed to back that up a little bit but yeah right and weird flutes I think the flute that we just heard is a sampled one but that I recorded myself and then oh nice play. yeah oh that's cool I was inspired a long time ago I remember seeing like when I was younger I was looking at uh, behind the scenes of the Lord of the Rings. And uh, they they had been re-recording like you know, so I don't know exactly what the term would be, but they, when they were doing this big tree, you know, the tree beard, you know, the mm. um, so they had problems with the voices being too like small or whatever. So they wanted wanted uh, them to have like a bigger resonant box or whatever. So they would take a big van and they would uh, put a put a speaker in there and then you know re-record these sounds actually affected by the real space. Oh, that's cool! Uh, just to get that, um, to get that uh, bigger resonant and with a little bit of length. I mean, also like I feel reverbs. Of course, I have to big big shout out this game. It's like you know Valhalla reverb. This. Uh, oh this yeah, reverb. Valhalla. Oh, I mean, it's yeah, like it's it's it's, on, it's it's like the cello and Valhalla reverb. Without it, it wouldn't have been nothing. But but also then again, like you know, actually microphones being sonically not so close to the instruments like it's also i feel like that it disappears a little bit because a lot of people are sitting in smaller studios where maybe the acoustic treatment of the rooms aren't that good so right. you don't want to go you don't want to push it back too much and that totally makes sense but then you know doing this thing of reamping or whatever you call yeah it is, yeah reamping you know, yeah and, and it works like i mean when you have a really nice reverb and uh like how, so how big was the room that you recorded in was it was it like S small enough studio? Yeah, so actually the, all the cello is recorded in here and some of... Uh, no, uh, I recorded some cello up at... Because um, the, the, the Bjorn who lives in the northern part of Sweden and we had some problems with Corona and he actually got his first kid so I took my gear and went up there as well so... But right. yeah, my room is quite... It's actually an old recording room so it works quite well and um, then I did an MS recording so I had some reverb for him as well uh, or like I could decide how much, how much room I wanted Nice um, so, and then I had, uh, for the, the nerdy peeps out there, I had the Sennheiser 8050, so that's like super cardioid. 
Right. So, um, so I was close up on him with uh, with uh, mostly I used that one as a demono, and then uh, I had a special uh, uh, Neumann U forty seven eight. Yeah, figure. So nice. Yeah, so, it's yeah, yeah. You, like, and you you produced the whole soundtrack. I'm guessing. Yep. Yep. Wow. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. A yeah. lovely job. It's it, it is really. Yeah, the mix is just the score, just like it's just oh, everything. Wow, man. Yeah, I mean, I I really pushed it this time, like so. Uh, we, the studio, I mean, I said like we have a big um, big stage uh, recording um, mixing room that's like you know with a whole floating uh, thing, whatever. So I took actually I had one week, so that's like the most I've put like to just you know I was sitting here until three o'clock in the morning just uh, mixing. Nice. But also, like, as you know, hearing something from someone else, uh, soothe, man. Soothe. Go buy that stuff. <laughs> buy it tomorrow. It's expensive, but it's worth it. It's uh, it's mind-blowingly good. With the combination of the Pro Q, if you know the one, the EQ. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've never so, used it, actually, so I might, I might have to check it out after. I mean, soothe is uh, basically, uh, like, dynamic EQ that uh, changes uh, the... The frequencies as the frequencies changed oh nice so yeah on the cello it's been like amazing so of course there will be a lot of rumble down you know lower frequencies so you can set a like a, a span there where you just say that okay in between these frequencies make sure to you know go crazy on whatever kind of goes over the threshold and wow. uh, yeah it's it's um, yeah it's expensive, but it, I, I know there are some cheaper ones out there as well. So definitely something to check out if you... Nice. Yeah. I was talking to you about the music and, and, and some like, like influences. And I, I like the, what I heard was like Brian Eno, Arvo Perth, uh, and kind of Cliff Martinez, you know, like the Solaris soundtrack. I was... Is, Sol, is that is is that the Solar that Tarkovsky did? Like, is that a new version of that? Yeah. Movie? Oh, it is. I haven't seen the old one. I've oh, been, it's man. on my list. It's on my list. So okay. And I've seen the none soundtrack. of them. Listen to the okay. soundtrack. It is cool. so good. I think you would like. It. It's totally this kind of vibe. It's real subtle. He uses like steel drums in it, uh, quite a lot, and awesome. it's it's really like ambient strings and pads and. Yeah, it's all it's it's really nice actually. It's a really nice, really nice soundtrack. I I haven't listened too much to, uh, to uh, Brian either actually, but uh, Arvo, yeah. I mean, I yeah. T what? Give me your thoughts on Arvo. <laughs> I want to hear him. Yeah, like I mean, I like I, as a kind of background. I mean, I don't get a lot of time to listen to to music, but when I do, and it's it's usually like relaxing music and like classical jazz most of the time. Modern, like you know, classical composers like Arvo Perth, uh, John and Adams, and a lot of minimalist composers. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, because uh, I remember when I, was, when I first started playing this game, I was like hearing kind of Arvo Perth a little bit. So I yeah. know, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. No, 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 no. I mean, the the funny thing though, I must uh, like say is that I, I, because I obviously I've been exposed to his work before, like, but I haven't really, I hadn't really been, uh, you know, uh, listening to him. And actually, I started listening to him by the end of the game prog, uh, like the project. So oh wow, it, it was uh, I, I re reincarnated him before I knew him. But yeah, cool. I read a book about him last year. Just started listening so much. So at the end process, I had some lovely nights where I was like, I was sitting in the studio till three o'clock i was listening to the mixes and some arvo on the way back and then i was reading his book in my kitchen eating popcorn <laughs> uh, just listening to arvo pat it was like it was amazing that's uh, good but yeah i mean uh, i mean he wow yeah i think there's uh, i have to send you there's one uh, he, he holds a speech uh, at a college where yeah he he's like a quote machine and also just amazing with his ideas. It's uh, yeah. yeah, it's really lovely. Yeah, it's really lovely. That's cool. I mean, it feels like he's very he's it's, it's so much more than just uh, you know about the music. Uh, I remember one thing where it's like uh, you need to start with your you need to uh, what was the quote? Uh, like uh, you need to make sure your you are in order before you start with the music. So you should start mm. with yourself before you start with the music, so that you can then through the music see if you're in tune wow so, that's yeah that's cool 
Yeah, wow. I think it's. Um, yeah, there, he's onto something there for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, like, and it's kind of true because you know, I, I I had this conversation with a few composer friends. You know, mental health and and stuff. And as as our job, we spend a lot of time alone. Um, yep. So it's kind of good to be like you know, to keep your mental health in check when you're. You know, I, like I've been for everybody, but you know, if you write music and stuff, you're spending a lot of the time on your own. So it is good to kind of, yeah, as you said, like, you know, look after yourself first, that get get yourself sorted, and then the music comes next. You know. Yeah. No, I mean, like, uh, let's as you know, the new generation promote that uh, as much as possible. I started going to therapy, uh, mm -hmm. like some uh, maybe two years ago now or something like that. And before that, I must admit that I was a bit skeptic, you know, to the whole thing, you know, and there's no nothing wrong with me or whatever. This kind of bullshit idea of whatever but right it has been it has been one of like it's i think also i don't know but you know playing instruments it it felt like i was learning a new instrument but the instrument was me so right um, yeah nice nice way and to put it, it was yeah it was so fascinating and uh, it's so much not of the cliche things that you would think so and uh, yeah i'm sure that i mean it, not only with you know the the way the music sounds but as you were saying, dealing with being alone, dealing with clients, dealing with uh, stress of you know getting it to work or whatever. So, right. If you're, if if you have the possibility to do that, uh, I wish I would have gone earlier. Mm. And then with Arvo Pet also saying that stuff, it was kind yeah. of yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 deep. Like. Yeah, I think it's. Um, yeah, as I said, like as an instrument, you know, and it's just it's so. I mean, I guess all of us that like music whatever we like you know to evolve and learn mm -hmm. new things and that that's te definitely on that shelf of new things for to learn sure. and, yeah for sure so go do that yeah whoever <laughs> whoever is, is watching yeah yeah <laughs> um wow you're getting things to grow man i'm getting stuff done getting things cleaned up <laughs> yep yep making it pretty so do you have any like go to um go to like um, shortcuts or inspirational stuff that you do that usually works or like sometimes I play I mean I play guitar so you know if if something's not happening on piano I try on guitar or or bass and sometimes you know when you get new sample libraries they inspire you you know if you're if you're writing something I was writing something recently and there's this re this one particular sample contact sample library and it was a patch and I was like that is cool I would have never have thought of that yeah yeah and and that's cool so like you get you get you know certain inspiration from really awesome sample libraries but uh, yeah sometimes from from other people's music like you know like for sure I, I listen to yeah, a lot of composers and and you know and I don't you know you don't want to like you know take like, take ideas but you want to take Little snippets of of their you know their compositions and and try to make make your own type yeah. of you know sound and and composition, for sure. All the, all the greats do like you know John Williams you know he used he used all the greats um, Shostakovich and Stravinsky and Holtz yeah 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 Holtz yeah. yeah for sure planets yeah. Yeah. right yeah I think I mean, I mean there's actually yeah there's a cam cameo in the in in uh, like that's almost I think it's the same key uh, from yeah. Williams in there as well but yeah <laughs> I mean it, it's a tribute it's a tribute so yeah. exactly exactly yeah yeah I mean every, everybody uses Holtz Holtz is you know Holtz is the man so yeah it's yeah it's crazy and John William of course <laughs> and John is, Williams yeah Still going. I heard he put new stuff out with the new, uh, like the new Star Wars series that yeah. he actually had done something again. So it's like, yeah, he's yeah. in the theme, isn't that the theme for uh, Obi Wan Kenobi? Oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh man, can't I can't wait. Like, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm a bit I'm of a, a bit of a Star Wars uh, uh, nerd. So cool, cool. St Star Wars and Star Trek. <laughs> All right, Both. I've never I've never done Star Trek, but I was actually having the discussion the other day that like I was getting tired of uh, movies that don't really like I, I don't buy into the stuff that you know people can be psychologically you know really out there being in the future space and you know all smart and then at the same time it's like no no I'm just gonna kill you but uh, a friend was like no but you should check out Star Trek it's more of a intellectual uh, thing going on there so I don't it, know if that's is. true 
Yeah. yeah, it is. And the music in Star Trek in the series is just amazing. <laughs> like, I ha I'll send you some stuff. Like, Dennis McCarthy, who's like, he's done over like 500 episodes or 400 episodes of music, which is which is crazy. I see um, the potential of a, a playlist coming together. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you some stuff that I love from some of the, the Star Trek stuff. And like, it's just, yeah, really like the, those guys just really knew their they knew, they know they know their craft like they're just so good yeah and also the solaris you have to send me as well mm. yeah it's like one of my favorite soundtracks it's just amazing and it's the it's the red hot chili peppers uh ex drummer cliff martinez which is crazy oh i love the soundtrack that Def, uh, daft punk did with uh who was to come with for uh Tron. oh yeah yeah like, yeah Although people are like, oh man, the Daft Punk did the soundtrack. I'm like, did they? Nah, I <laughs> mean, a, yeah, it was There's probably... a composer, there's an orchestrator, a uh, string composer, I can't remember his name, uh, who I'm sure did a lot of the uh, arrangements yeah. uh, of yeah. the strings and the brass and stuff. Um, I'd imagine. And I'm not, I'm not taking away from Daft Punk because Daft Punk are amazing. No, 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 no. Sure, I'd no, yeah. say they probably had a lot of help from him. And I don't think he got any of the the limelight from it, but you know that's that's just the way it goes. I suppose you have a headline band doing a doing a big film, so yep. Um, it's not it's not as good as the Wendy Carlos version, though. Uh, I will say, is that the, the first movie? That's the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Wendy Carlos, oh, she's amazing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah, so this is yeah. I mean, now this is actually the Gobblers uh, theme that we're hearing right now. Oh yeah. Uh, so the first time we get to get an idea of that, we're not alone. Yeah, and the music mm, re the represents it. You can hear that. <laughs> yeah. Nice semitone clash. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. Bjorn doing his thing. <laughs> well. Yeah, it's good. Like, uh, yeah, they're the film scores. I'm, I'm slowly starting to appreciate a lot of the older ones even more that I've missed out on. So. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. There's some. I don't know. Do you have any favorites from film soundtracks that you that you were like, that's my go-to to listen to, or? That's a good question. Um, I can more think of like stuff that has hit me very nicely. Uh, this latest, like, uh, uh, I saw a lovely film called Portrait of Woman on Woman in Fire on Fire Woman on Fire. Uh, and it was like it, there were no music almost, but there were music two times. And when that struck you, or yeah, when that arrived, it was amazing. It was so wow. good. Um, but then I must say, like I when um, I, I really love uh, Johan Johansson's stuff. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean Arrival. It's like oh my god, that that soundtrack I can listen to a lot. Uh, I yeah. think that, that's amazing. That's that's a beautiful soundtrack. Yeah, um, it's a shame so, he died so young. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really sad. I get really happy though listening to Hildur, like uh, his oh, apprentice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, she's also a cello lover, so mm. um, she, she's a phenomenal composer. Yeah, yeah. The the Joker stuff that did, she did is mm. is fantastic. Yeah. Is she Swedish as well? Is she? No, or Icelandic. Icelandic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Icelandic. But I think she's uh, she's working in uh, Berlin, I think, and yeah, the, the, she's playing a lot on his stuff actually. So I think she is, um, yeah, on a lot of that songs that he's done. Also, his like absolute, you know, or whatever, like the, his own stuff that's not into project. I think she's playing on this as well. So right. Yeah. Yeah, there's something with that movie. I mean, the, the, I think the score might be a little bit better than the, the actual movie, but... <laughs> yeah, it's, the, it's that case, isn't it? Oh, yeah, your, your favorite song from, from the game. What, what would be your favorite song? Oh, my favorite song. Hmm. I mean, um, the... Um, I think I must say, actually, the, 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 the theme of the planet... And uh, then it has to be like uh, maybe friction resolved or friction. So they're not spoiling too much, but uh, there's an argue, and when they kind of get back to each other, uh, there's yes. uh, um, there's a song with uh, Bjorn playing cello, and uh, you're kind of walking up a hill towards a mountain, and uh, yeah. There's something with that one that just yeah, and there's a lot of pump organ in that one as well. That oh, okay. Do you remember the name okay. of it? 
Uh, it should be like no, but I think it is friction resolve. Friction. So maybe resolve, resolve three, maybe. Three. Okay, let's play it. Let's. Play okay, it. cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, it's, it's delicious, like... Delicious harmonies. Yeah, and the, and the pump organ is there underneath it all. It's kind of... Somehow. Actually, there's a little bit of a fake, uh, mm, what's it called? Uh, Mellotron. Mellotron. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's that's so nice. There's like a natural, I don't know what in the melody there's like a natural note that comes in. To you recorded it an octave down, an octave up, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And just Bjorn on a one take. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess everyone will react differently to to this kind of harmonies, but I think there's some sense of yeah. No, I shouldn't say what. I, it's better to let someone else decide on. No, it's no, it's cool. It's it's good to have uh, your thoughts on that. Like, no, but I mean, it's like I think there's. Uh, I think it's going back to the melancholy thing that we talked about before. So. Mm -hmm. But for me, there's a lot of hope in this one, so mm. I think that's why I, I like it, even though it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like just touching on a hope, right? It's like, has that little bit of yeah. uplifting. Yeah. And then personally, like, uh, I get to be visiting a, one of the biggest studios there, there is in Gothenburg that actually has a real chillist. Oh, and, uh, lovely. Yeah, I've been nerding about that instrument for so many years, and uh, I get goosebumps actually thinking about it because I, I, um, yeah, I know the guy that owns the studio a little bit, and he owed me a favor, so I was like, oh. uh, so I got to go there with a, another colleague of mine, and we get to record the Celeste and sample it that day, and it was yeah, oh, that was man. one of the most magical days. So. The Celeste is so good. Like every, yeah. every time I hear a Celeste, I think of uh, Neptune. You know the planet sweet Neptune with the Celeste, mm. ne Neptune and Harry the... Potter, of and course, Har and Harry Potter, of course. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it's a great yeah. instrument. Yeah, yeah. There's something there for sure. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite video game soundtrack of like all time? Oof. All time? Do we go into that discussion? <laughs> we might be here all night. Um, no, but uh, all time. Oh my god. I mean, I played some really good recently stuff uh, that might be more fun. Like, uh, uh, there was one in the game called, um, uh, was it Far Loan Sales? Hmm. Uh, a small one. They just released a follow-up to that album, and uh, it was, uh, 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 his name was, oh, I will butch it, probably something like J Joel Soch, something like that. Uh, yeah, he did a great, great soundtrack. Uh, also, is it Mac, Mac, Machinium? Mac, me, me, Machinarium? Was it called? Oh, I'm so bad with names. Uh, <laughs> also, sure. great soundtrack. That, that was actually, I know, uh, Tobias, the art director, really loved that one when we started out. Like, I think it's called like Thomas. Uh, Word names Dov, Dovrak, something like that. Awesome stuff. Right. Um. I mean, I really 
like what they did in Breath of the Wild as well. Mm. Uh, thought it was my. Have you played it? No, I haven't. But I, I, I want to play it. There's just like I'm. There's so many games I want to play. Um. Uh, yeah, this year that I, I have a list. I have a huge list of games I want to play. <laughs> I mean, that one should go, you know, fairly high up. I would say, dude. That's yeah. I thought it was. Also, with the, the the stuff that we've been talking about, to try something else and do something differently, like I right. think that they're yeah they're doing stuff there in that game that's just you know you you go like oh okay and then it's like yeah it's amazing. <laughs> well, so. and what about you? Do you do you, what, what's yours? What you, what, what? Favorite soundtrack? Um, I have like a few. There's like the original Doom soundtrack by Bobby Prince. Mm -hmm. That was like that was one of the first games I played. And like one of the first games that I heard like digitized sounds with, with my sound blaster. Like my dad bought us a sound blaster 16. And I, I, I don't know how old you are, but like I'm I'm 36, so you know I started gaming in yeah like the late 80s, early 90s. So you know we had like PC speaker and uh, yeah. and it was you know it's the shock of but then when my dad bought the uh, sound blaster 16 in '94 or whatever it was, plugged it in. And you know, we loaded up Dune, it was like all these digitized like sounds and it was amazing. Wow. And then the music yeah. and I was like just like it was just amazing. It was just like that that game and just like the game in general, like the game is amazing. Uh, but the music and like, the sound effects both done both done by Bobby Prince. It's just like I don't know, I think that for me that's like the the bench the benchmark of like I don't know. I mean it's old, it's you know, it's thirty years or something. Not not quite thirty, it's three nine or twenty eight years old now. Um, but you know, it's just the music's great, and yeah, the sound yeah. effects are amazing. The sound design's so good. Um, Has anything come close? Do I have some other ones like you know, like the Diablo Two soundtrack by by Does Matt Ullman. I don't, that I don't know. Yeah, like you'll 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 definitely. Know oh, oh Diablo Two, yeah, Diablo, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Uh, sorry, that was a little bit of English barrier. There. Oh, yeah, sorry, okay, sorry. Yeah. It's probably my accent <laughs> no, no. as well. It's not helping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, 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 amazing stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, did he also do the stuff for uh, Torchlight? He did. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, he did. Look, his stuff's amazing. It's again, like Double Two Center. It's not adaptive. It's just like it just plays music, which is which yeah. is what I love. Yeah. And it's quite ambient. I mean, I love amb ambient music anyway, but like just in video games, for me. If you're gonna do like yeah music for 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 games, it's like ambient music, the, the style of just you know pads and atmospheres and string pads, yeah. and it's just it just works so well. Yeah. Um, and uh, what else? Uh, there's probably a few others. Um, what, are, what other games would be like and really awesome soundtracks? Um, Obviously, I love the disaster pieces stuff as well. You oh know, yeah, uh, Pipe Light Drifter. Yeah. Yeah, like there's there's some great like there's some great indie game music, for, like like amazing indie game music. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, chip tune stuff is awesome. You can't. You yeah, can't... yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. <sighs> and it feels like he also puts a lot of effort in his like production. It's like there's so much going on. Listening to it like later on, you 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 still exp like you know find new stuff in there. That's amazing. So right, right. What's your dog choice? Do you have a few different dolls, or are you, do you stick with one? Um, I've been trying them all, I guess, but uh, I've been working in Logic for them. Like, uh, yeah, I make all music in Logic. But, ah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been through, you know, started off Fruit Tools, did a lot of, actually worked as a dubbing engineer for a while, doing a oh, lot cool. of Nuendo. Yeah. And then, of course, Ableton, I've tried it. And the big studio here, we have Fruit Tools as well, so. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, Logic, it's, I'm stuck to the, to the Logic world. Yeah, but, Lo uh, Logic's great. Logic's really great. We used that in, in college and... Um, I don't have a Mac, so when I left, that's yeah, that's on the bad side that you need to buy a uh, expensive uh, Mac. But yeah, I so. really don't like. There's so much war going on with this kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've been looking at Reaper uh, mm -hmm. so much, but uh, it's like, um, yeah, I'm just uh, you know whatever works, you know what you're fast and comfortable with. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's whatever you're. Most you're of them do the same things these days, anyway. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I could tell you a funny thing about the sound I'm hearing at least right now. Oh, really? It's like the the that's like a recording from uh like a 
um, like a kindergarten thing where they had this like big uh, instrument installation where it was all tuned to a key and pe like kids were running around laughing and just hitting all this stuff. Oh, cool! So you could, I mean, if you listen to the soundtrack, you'll hear it more. But I was like, they, um, I just recorded it and then like changed the key to work with my stuff, and it's all underneath everything as a drone. Oh, um, oh what kind of yeah. sound is it? So I don't know, like I couldn't get into the to the actual like uh, space where the where the 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 sound was, but like if you listen to it on your own, uh, it's like it sounds almost like a metal glockenspiel something ish uh, marimba, and then there's just you can hear actually kids uh, laughing in the background. So um, right, that's that's yeah. mad. That's so <laughs> but, cool. Yeah, it, it turned out quite well, actually. I thought it was s Intentional suited. Intentional spill. <laughs> no, but, and also, actually, if we were to talk, like, what we talked about before, I, I felt that that really gave the depth of the of the music. It oh, helped that's cool. to give the depth, because th it was such a long distance, you know, from the microphone to the to the actual source of the sound. Right. As well right. as, you know, it's a big, broad stereo image. So, yeah, that helped as well. That's amazing. That's cool, man. Yeah, I must. Yeah. I don't do enough sampling. That's something I definitely gotta start doing more. Yeah, it's great fun, uh, and you know, yeah, it's just it's amazing fun. I mean, these days with you know cell phones, microphones being so good, it's mm. like, of course I have like a fancy, you know, portable field recorders, but nice. I mean, uh, the best sounds are the sounds that you record. So, mm -hmm. then doesn't matter what what you're recording with i think yeah for sure yeah. yeah i have a zoom h1n something yeah it's the, the you know the old one with the with the xy it's it still works, good works great like yeah it works yeah great. i i i'm uh, about to try out the you know road the the, the the microphone company they have like the little yeah. insert as well for the iphone so you can just plug that in oh nice yeah but honestly, I've recorded a lot with my iPhone that I've used over the years, so... Yeah, that's cool, man. I, I love that. I love that you're, like, recording stuff as you go, and you're like, I'm going to use that in my next soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool, man. I love that. World building with the real world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, th this has been great, man. Listen, thank, like, thank you so much. I mean, it's, it's we're, we've been doing this for <laughs> two hours now. And oh, wow. It's like most of your time, yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm all good. Um, they, they were so fun, dude. So yeah, it was awesome. Cool, thank man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thank, so glad. Thank you so much. Yeah, likewise. And uh, I, I'll okay. actually, I'll, I'll find you on social media. What's 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 your Instagram, actually? So I go under my personas, right? Rat Vader. So, Rat Vader, perfect. Yeah, cool. So if you, yeah, it would be possible to find me on whatever I'm on so awesome awesome cool 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 man all right cool chat to you soon hey. yes all right take care take care bye 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 Cheers.